Welcome back to the rudder and welcome aboard Antoinette, our Mary Fisher 895. Today we're going to do some Q&As on the solar panels we put on about four months ago. So check out the video of when we installed this 175 watt flexible solar panel. Uh, it's been unreal. Matter of fact, it's so good that I don't really think about it anymore. When we've combined this with our big um, battery, so our house battery is 330 amp hours, and basically it means when we go away on the anchor, I don't really think about our power usage. Essentially we... <laughs> So when we go away at anchor, essentially, we don't really have to think about our power usage. Overnight, we use between 30 and 50 amp hours. And then during the day, the solar panel builds it back up a bit. We probably don't get all of that usage back, but with that big battery, we certainly have enough to go away for several nights without a worry. So one of the questions, how it's handling being here on the roof, as you, if you have a look in that video, I put it on with double-sided tape so <laughs> the double-sided tapes doing what it's supposed to we have cruised at you know 40 knots we don't cruise at 40 knots we've been at 40 knots and it's actually held on tightly we also had Antoinette lifted out and transported for her service and that means she's on the highway going 100 k's an hour so the double-sided tape certainly has held there even this little rise, which was problematic when I was putting it on, you know, there is a space under here, but it's not lifting up at all. I'll get some closer videos, but one of the questions was, does it drain? Does the water come off it? And certainly when we're washing down, or we've had heaps of rain here over the winter, not today, it drains out fine. I left channels in it, and you can see a, there's a bit of water coming out from underneath it. So it does drain out. So I think the adhesion to the deck has been absolutely fine. And after five months, four months, it's still stuck tight and there is no way that is moving. Andy also had a few other questions. So we'll go down into the lazarette to uh, have a look at the MPV and check out the battery setup. The other questions were about the power system and the cabling we use to the battery. And also there was one question about the shore power. And have we had any issues with that so i don't know how many videos we end up doing this but down into the lazarette i go so end up in down here i don't know every second or third video i reckon so we've got the controller here one of the questions was about fuses have i used any inline fuses to the controller and also over to the batteries and i haven't there are no fuses in here the controller obviously has fuses within itself to control that charge and control it going to the batteries. I didn't want to break any of these cables and make another junction point. Every junction point is a place to have issues. So I didn't put any inline fuses in. I'm just using the fuses that come in the controller system. And I don't have any fuses between the controller and the battery. So that was my choice. I didn't want to break any more cables and have chance for other issues. With the shore power, we've had no troubles with the shore power. You can, we've plugged in the shore power, it charges up the batteries and it really doesn't affect what's happening with the solar system. And the last question was, did I use any switches to essentially switch off the solar panels? And the answer is no. Because of the controller, it, it deals with all that and essentially turns off the amount of power from the solar cells to the batteries. So my batteries are fully charged after going out yesterday and having the engines running. And if you have a look here, so it's charging at 3.6 amps and it is full sun. So there'd be more charge than 3.6 amps being generated by the cells, but it's being controlled by the controller. So the batteries don't get overcharged and it goes through a charging and discharging cycle. So yeah, there is, um, I didn't find a need to put in extra switches. And once again, having extra switches means it's always a, a place of failure every time you put in a new switch. That's it. I hope you liked that quick video, just a 
few areas of the solar panels that I might have forgotten in that first video. Check out the first video if you want to have a look at that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and please like and subscribe.